right, so I'm going to call the meeting to order and just uh, start by uh, welcoming everybody, and then we're just going to do a quick attendance. Um, Michael? Here. Mary? Mary? Here. Uh, Meg? Here. Maribel? Not yet. I bet she will be joining us. Um, Chris? I'm here. Here. Helene? and Lauren are not here, but we do have a quorum of five, so we're good to go. We also have Daniel uh, Koff is here uh, with us, our financial consultant, welcome, and of course, Amy. And then Olivia uh, Mazel is here for, um, for a thing a little bit later down on our agenda. So um, the first thing we wanna do, I think is, uh, do we wanna review our meeting minutes? Yes. Were there any? Questions or concerns relating to the meeting minutes? Does that, did everybody get the meeting minutes? Did we get those out? We may, I may, I may have missed that. Did everybody get those? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, Mr. Chairman, the August fourteenth meeting. Yes, sir. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Okay. One up. Oh, Helene is with us. Welcome, Helene. All right. Were there any concerns with those meeting minutes? Any questions or any anything we wanted to discuss? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, no, I don't have any questions, but there's a couple of items that at the end of the meeting, if we could go over as old business, I have yep. some um, some questions regarding the meeting, the minutes, but it's not the meetings per se, it's what's contained in them. Yeah, absolutely. They're old business if you want. Yeah, we can absolutely uh, discuss that. Um, so I'll just, uh, I guess, entertain a motion to accept the uh, minutes from the meeting of August 14th. I we'll make a motion to accept August 5th meeting minutes. Uh, the August 6th, uh, 14th. Uh, yeah, 14th. Wait, what did I do? Give you the wrong date? Yeah, close enough. Say you got the month right. Yep. Is there a second? All right. Second. Take a roll call, I suppose. Uh, Mike? Yes. Mary? Yes. Meg? Yes. Maribel? Uh, Chris. Yes. Helene. I wasn't at the meeting, but I did watch it. Okay. All right. So moving on, we have uh, the first thing on our agenda is um, certainly, certainly, as you know, um, our administrator, Amy, uh, is uh, moving on. And we thank Amy, of course. Um, but some of the, the, most of this meeting, in fact, is sort of a, you know, a, a way of our moving, uh, moving ahead. So the first thing really is to change the a proposal to change the scope of service for our financial consultant, Daniel, um, to allow him to process the invoices for our committee. Um, you know, just some thoughts on that. It's sort of a, a, I view it as an essential service um, for, the, for the CPA. I mean, we have grantees who have uh, gone through quite a bit to, to get, you know, their, their grants. And, you know, when it's time for them to move forward on their projects, we need to be able to kind of hold up our end. I don't want to, I don't want to have to tell people, you know, it's going to be four months, you know, you're going to have to put your project off until January or however long it is. I think it's, you know, I think it's something that's key for us. The wheels need to keep moving. Um, so, uh, you know, I have some numbers here. Um, you know, I could I could start throwing stuff out, but I just thought perhaps the committee um, might have some comments or questions for first. Or would you like me to just forge ahead with some with some info? Forge ahead. <laughs> Everybody feel good about that. So. Um, just some numbers for us. Our FY25 admin budget um, is going to be about $35,000, a little bit under, um, which is very similar to the last two years. Um, FY24 was a little over 35. FY23 was 39. Um, and each year we've been, you know, basically pretty similar in terms of what our admin budgets and expenditures are and what our operating expenses are it breaks down to roughly 
15 or $16,000 for our staff and about uh, a little under 10,000, somewhere between 95 and 10,000 for operating expenses. Um, so what I've tried, sorry, my two-year-old's running by, what I've tried to do is to do what I call an overestimate of what I think the time investment will cost uh, for Daniel to, to process these invoices, which includes training. I I hope and I actually expect it to be much less than this, but um, we did send out those proposed budgets, um, which would be uh, beginning the, the 15th of September and running through December, um, which would be 15 weeks, um, budgeting four hours per week to process the invoices. And then I've included some time for training, which I think is important. And I think it's something that the, the committee retains value on as well, um, Daniel, will be well versed in uh, hey honey will be well versed in you know how the invoices work and how the purchasing works as we get our new uh, administer administrator up and running so um, excuse me one second honey I'm in my meeting so um, I'm, we're just going to stop in the violet dress okay I love you I'll, I'll catch up doing? with you okay Good. sorry so uh, for FY24, we process 16 invoices. So I'm hopeful that in this four month time, perhaps we won't have too many invoices. They can be time consuming and they're kind of depends on how they are. Um, but my hope is that we'll be able to, uh, you know, utilize much less than four hours per week. I think there's going to be a lot of weeks where Daniel won't have any invoices to uh, process at all. So, um, you know, this budget is basically, like I said, my best guess overestimate on how this is going to work. I spoke with Amy about it. I spoke with Daniel. Uh, Meg and I talked about it. I talked to uh, the purchasing uh, director, Ted, the interim chief uh, purchasing officer, Ted, about, about it. And, you know, that was our best estimate to try to make sure that we had enough of a budget so Daniel would have the time to make sure the invoices got process but like I said I think it's going to be um I think it's going to be less than that so uh were there any other questions or concerns or do we want to move forward on this uh Daniel oh sorry Michael uh no Mr. Chairman uh, other than uh, no we have we have no other choice but to go forward as you suggested and Daniel, I'm sure, is capable, more than capable of, of stepping in until we find a, a new administrator. Um, but I, again, um, I was rather startled, I think we all were, knowing that the CP3 forms were not filled out for the last three years. And I'm sure we've all got that letter from Chase Mack, or whatever his name was, from, the, from Boston, indicating that if we don't get it in, they're going to start withholding uh, the money from us. So do you remember last our last meeting when I asked if there was any uh, penalties that we'd have to suffer. Mm. And he made it very clear in his email to us, yeah, there will be. So uh, again, to the mayor, to uh, the, you know, the, uh, the auditor, um, you guys, through no fault of our own, you guys got to put that thing through. As Dan, last, our last meeting indicated that, uh, it's up to the city, not us, to, to do that work. But I just wanted to throw that out there that we, the uh, poor John, and uh, with Dan is filling in until we get an administrator, I think yeah, we have uh, a choice. Just a point of uh, clarification um, is the CP2 form, it's it's super confusing, it was the one that we discussed last um, meeting. The CP3 form is slightly different and that's filled out uh, by somebody different, I believe. So. I think that's one where we are actually looking into that one. Obviously, uh, we got that email today, uh, the same one you did. So we're, we're working on that um, to make sure that gets done by the 15th. But the CP2 form, I should, should update you that I did speak with Tanya about that and she's figured out um, a way to run the Munis website or the, the Munis database to be able to draw those numbers out for us. So she's confident that that will be submitted prior to um, the... Uh, tax rate being set that's the deadline on that and she's and she's you know she's like that's going to get done she's like I just gotta you know find some some time to do that the CP3 form uh, Mr. Falsetti 
Uh, bye. Have fun. The CP3 uh, for Mr. Falsetti is the one that we got that email about today. And um, I'm going to have to circle back on that one as we as we look into it a little bit more. But I'm pretty sure that we're on top of that one already. Yeah, no, you're right, Mr. Chairman. It is the CP2 form I was referring to. Yes. My mistake. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's very, very, can be a lot. Um, but just, you know, just back to our thing is I, I just want to tell everybody, I'm going to monitor, of course, the hours. Daniel and I are in good contact. He's a very, you know, very uh, responsive anytime we need him. So, I'll, you know, if next month we come, you know, we come up and it's, you know, the numbers are, you know, really high or there's some weirdness to it, you know, we'll, we can revisit it and have a discussion about it. I'll keep everybody posted. And I just want to remind everybody too, that Daniel, um, you know, he's very reliable and just bills for the hours that he works. So he, you know, it, it, it's something that I feel comfortable allotting this time um, to give us a little bit of buffer with. So I just think that that's important as well Is that, you know, basically I'm going to keep an eye on it and we're working with, a you know, a person that we have a good working relationship. So I think I feel comfortable with it. Mr. Chairman, do you want to vote on uh, the second item? Do you want us to? I would. If if it's the will of the committee, that would be wonderful. Would I, uh, would anyone like to make a motion to accept uh, the proposal, the proposed change in scope of service with the uh, budget that I sent out to everybody? So moved. Second. Is there a second? All right. Uh, I'm going to take a vote on that. Uh, Michael. All right. Yes. Mary. Yes. Meg? Yes. Uh, Maribel? Uh, Chris? Yes. Helene? Yes. All right. And Lauren no. is not with us yet. I think Lauren's going to try to jump in after. Like I said, she did message me about it. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that. She had a work conflict. So thank you so much. So it looks like uh, that's passed. So Daniel, um, thank you for coming out um, and being available. If there are any questions, I think we were able to move it forward. Um, but I think you and I will be in touch. Um, Daniel, um, I didn't want to be presumptuous, but I was hoping that the committee would approve this. And I already set Daniel up with a training with purchasing and he's been uh, kind enough to clear his schedule. So he's able to attend that. So Ted from purchasing is going to do a, a, a munis slash purchasing training that Daniel will be uh, able to be a part of. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to just kind of roll right into it with the invoices and not, um, not miss too much. So we'll see how that goes, but we thank, uh, thank you, Daniel. And thank you to the committee for uh, moving that forward for us. All right. Thank you all. I look forward to continuing to work with you and helping you through this transition. We are too. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate you, Daniel. Thanks so much. All right. So our next item was uh, one of our members brought this idea to me. I think it's, um, you know, when I first heard the idea, I liked it. And then I thought about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. Like I just, it grew, it, it grew even it, I grew to like it even more the more I when I, once I thought the whole the whole thing through. Um, so the idea was brought um, for us to, as as is noted in the agenda, a um, a subcommittee for for new applicants. So it's you know it's a confusing process. You know what I mean. I'm the chairman of the committee, and it's to, to be honest, it's like it's a bit much. You know what I mean. It's a lot, and I think that uh, again with Amy. Uh, moving on that it's something that we want to be on top of it's something that there's a you know a process to um and we want to be responsive and make sure that we're answering all these questions and just being available to our new applicants so people feel welcome so they feel like you know when they come to the cpa we're not a difficult group to deal with that they're you know that they're able to move stuff forward so um mary had uh if i may uh uh give mary credit it was mary's idea and i just think it's a great great idea i think um you know, just with, you know, the, the interaction with the historical commission, just making meeting deadlines, eligibility issues, just, you know, just all those things. Um, if this subcommittee was able to kind of take that on, it, it would, it would really help us make sure that we're doing a good job on something if that's important. So, um, was there any discussion? Yeah. Mary. Yes. Um, but I, I, you don't have a committee if you have only one person. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping someone else will uh, step in and volunteer to help. Indeed. I saw a couple of hands. Uh, Chris, 
Would you be interested in? So Chris yes. and, and uh, Helene. Actually, with the historical commission, sure. Yeah, and I think that that makes sense. I mean, we, you know, certainly the three main categories, uh, one of which is historical to have somebody from the historical commission on um, on that subcommittee would just help, you know, th that way you'd, you'd be looped in on everything, you know, it wouldn't yeah. be even a matter of me having to tell you, you know, this is our applicant, you'd know, you know what I mean? It'd be just yeah. you want to figure out how we want to handle it. Um, Helene, did you did you also want to uh, be on that committee and perhaps Meg, I thought yeah. I saw Meg's hand. So I think that's wonderful. I'll um, I'll leave myself off it because um, otherwise we're just having a straight meeting. And um, you know I think uh, if it's if it's all right with the committee, I think I would choose Mary to be the chairperson of that committee. It was her idea, and I also think that uh, aside from that fact, I think you're actually the ideal person because you're very organized and very. Um, uh, committed to process to making sure we're doing things the right way and I think that's exactly what we're looking for in this uh, in this situation so um, if it would be uh, comfortable with the committee I'd like to entertain a motion that we create this subcommittee um, do we want to discuss any parameters or any uh, anything else regarding that I have a question um, so just in terms of what the parameters are of what the committee will do are they just sort of going to be the uh, point people for looking at the initial applications and answering questions directly with applicants? Are they going to look at eligibility? Yes, I, I was thinking that they would do all of that, that they would if 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 they were if they were willing, that they would sort of shepherd our applicants through the really through the fall and into our in-person applications. I think that's kind of the life cycle of the committee as I see it. Um, you know, we could you know, we could alter that. We could kind of see how it goes. We could, maybe there's some logical or practical changes that we may make to that as we go. But I kind of like the idea of keeping it broad and, um, you know, allowing the committee to just do good work and just to report back to, you know, ideally to me as the chair and I can kind of let everybody know. I mean, most of the committee is on the subcommittee, so it's not like we're going to be out of the loop on it, but yeah. Um, and we will have the inf is some of the information is already compiled somewhere i'm assuming is that correct as some of it is already compiled somewhere yeah so we have some um we have had some applicants already uh we've gotten a couple of today a little bit of a flurry are coming in so i what i was thinking is that i would send all that information to mary um i was also going to review the different just different. We, there's all these different folders and just pieces of information that we're sort of sorting through. Meg and I have been working on that with Amy and, you know, maybe I just send you any relevant, relevant information from that as well, just from our archives or just financial data or just information about forms or, you know, processes that were followed in the past that might uh, help you out in, in, in forming a good process. So just a sense, yeah, basically I'll just I'll just try to get you all the information I that's even somewhat related to the, to that um, to that goal and and go go from there if that sounds acceptable. Good. And then then we still have our same deadlines, right? Mm -hmm. Which remind me what they are. I think there's a deadline for historic that's earlier than the others, and so okay. we kind of yep. All yep. that is still the same. Yes, yes. So um, we do have a calendar. I can send out um, a rough one, but I think that could also be something that the, the subcommittee could could map out a little bit better for us. Maybe there's some things that make sense, or maybe they'll say, "Oh, instead of this, let's do this." And you know, a lot of times when you delve deep into things, you you know, you find better processes. So I think maybe we haven't always had the time to do that. Um, but that was my thought on it. Do we feel all feel comfortable with that? So we'd have a committee of uh, Mary as the chairperson with a Chris on historic, Helene from uh, outdoor recreation, park and rec, and then Meg uh, as well. And, um, do we want to take a vote to approve that approve that committee? There's only one person left to make the motion. <laughs> yes, I'll go on on a limb and say so move. <laughs> all right. I don't know if we do we need a second, but perhaps we second. I second. <laughs> I don't know. But we don't we don't have a quorum issue, right? About the committee. Oh, oh. right. What is the number for a quorum? Uh, yeah, you don't want to have that. So in the past, um the, the contract subcommittee, we always kept to three people because then it was never a quorum, but I don't think four is either. So I as long as it's four people, we should be fine. 
Yeah, 50% okay. plus one. So even though we're at eight, four would actually be okay. Eight or nine would leave us, four would be fine. So, um, okay, cool. We feel good about that. Um, all right, so I'll just take a vote on that. Uh, let me get my handy vote. I typed everybody's name out on a list nice for myself to do attendance and stuff. So I'm getting uh, prepared. Uh, Michael. Uh, yes. Mary. Yes. Meg. Yes. Maribel. Uh, Chris. Yes. Pauline. Yes. And Lauren is not with us yet. So I, I appreciate that. I think, um, like I said, I, I, I just love the idea. I can't say it enough. I think it's going to be great. And Mary, I'll reach out um, probably tomorrow and I'll, I'll give you all the information I have immediately available and we'll start, uh, we'll start digging into what else we want to, uh, we need to do to get, get you, get you uh, all set up. So okay. thank you. That sounds good. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. So thank you so much for that. Um, all right. Our next uh, agenda item, moving along nicely, is uh, we're, we're going to welcome Olivia uh, Mazel here. She's with us uh, off camera. Olivia, you with us? Here we are. Um, so uh, the CPA and the uh, and the friends of sorry, friends of Holyoke City Hall have you know worked together to uh, fix and rehabilitate the stained glass windows, the beautiful those beautiful stained glass windows that we have in our beautiful city hall. So, um, Olivia, do you um, did you want to talk at all first, or do you want me to just introduce the situation, or did you have any uh, intro sure. that you to give to us? You. Um, why don't you introduce, I'm not, I'm not sure if everyone knows the, what sure. the situation is. Sure. So we had a previous sign, uh, that was, that was, uh, put into the wall, um, in city hall and it was removed. And so in digging about, you know, why the sign was removed and where it was, I came to realize that the friends of City Hall had had wanted to have a different sign or a different wording on the sign in a different location of the sign. Um, so, you know, I reached out to Olivia. I spoke to a few folks and kind of gathered information and Olivia proposed to us. She said, well, I'll propose a new wording for a sign. I will propose a uh, I will propose to pay for the sign. And I said, well, that seems reasonable enough for me to bring to the committee to, to for consideration. So yes, I actually sent that to everybody, uh, Olivia. So they all have okay. that, Good. that came in the agenda. And I'm just going to read the wording in case okay. anyone doesn't have it. So the proposed sign would say, uh, the stained glass window restoration in the city hall ballroom was supported by the Department of Public Works the city engineers, the friends of City Hall and the citizens of Holyoke through the Community Preservation Act. And I think another re request of the friends was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Olivia, you wanted to put this in the front foyer rather than in the ballroom, is that correct? Right, right. The, the City Hall, interior City Hall has preservation restrictions of, so, one of the concerns was that the sign was put up without historical, com without any parameters. So um, I did take a picture. It, it's difficult to see, but um, it's on my cell phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's difficult to see, um, but it's it's it, the sign was up for the gala and uh, the the events of 150th. And the friends ha didn't have any input in the signage and the wording. And that was kind of a concern to the friends because we've been working on this since uh, 2012 uh, mm -hmm. before and, and other departments were, were, were involved in the, um, in the stained glass windows. And, and now that we're coming to the end we have two stained glass windows left in the in the main ballroom, uh, two 
two more windows in the lobby and uh, some small lunettes on in the back in the stairwell. So it's mm -hmm. um, had um, had the application, uh, Sean's application gone through, probably would have all been able to finish up um, the process, you know. Um, yep. so, so we would have had... Um, we would have had all the stained glass windows done. Of course, that's that's. Um, we'll go through another round to see what happens with that. Um, so, uh, in the meantime, the friends is uh, spending down their account, their accounts. We've also done some of the other projects we've done in City Hall is uh, restored. Uh, the city. Uh, Board of Aldermen, uh, the huge, the big six by six portraits that uh, the city council has in the um, in the city council chambers. There's about 20 large portraits that uh, the friends uh, put in UV glass and uh, did archive paid for paid for the UV glass and archival backing that the mayor uh, wants to put up throughout City Hall once once the restoration process is finished. And also the friends also uh, funded um, uh, restoration of some of the uh, historical documents that were found in the basement yep. of City Hall, uh, uh, school census and uh, very interesting, huge journals and, and ledgers that have been tucked away and and uh, we sent some of the pictures over the past years and and the CPA um, funded the uh, funded those uh, funded that document project so so uh, we would like to um, we would like to have a little more we, we were a little concerned because we didn't have input in that sign we didn't have we didn't fund it. We don't know where it came from. It just popped in there, and and it was, uh, it wasn't bolted in the wall. It was just bored in the walls. Somebody somebody bored holes in the wall. So that seemed a little concerning that people can go in and do that. So okay, uh, is this what you want? Yes. Yeah. That's what you want. Okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Can you look at the one you just held up a, a picture uh, in, in a frame of this, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you look at the very last word under community preservation? It says A R T. Yep. Community uh, preservation. Uh, okay, yeah. that should be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's no. There's that's a couple fine. Of typos. Yeah, there is. Oh yeah, this is just a draft. Yeah, this is just a draft. Yeah, this this is is just a draft. Okay. It's not, you know. That's fine. I, I know it. It has to go through the committee and has to. I know. Get all it's, fine. It's, fine all it's fine. it's fine. It's fine. This is what you folks would like to do, and put it in the frame and hang it like that. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, with okay. your approval. So, yeah. so move. Um, Megan, I saw Meg's hand raised. Um, does the text, because I, I listened to it, but um, does the text mention the taxpayer? Uh, it's sort of. Citizens. It does say citizens of Holyoke? Yeah, it says citizens of Holyoke through the Community Preservation Act. So the word taxpayer is not is not in it directly. Um, it's just because the reason why we're putting up the sign, um, and it's different in this kind of project, Olivia, because you're like, yes, there there were these two windows that were restored prior to the ones that the, the CPA Act was used to restore. Um, and it may be, you know, you're trying to create like a composite sign, I think is the goal to like sort of get at the entire process. And that could be, or it could be two signs. It could be like, you know, this window was done by this group and this was done with CPA funding. Like, I think either is fine. Like you could have two signs or one sign, but the goal of the CPA sign specifically is to give credit to the taxpayer. And so that they know that their tax money went towards funding it. So um, I just want to make sure that whatever the language is really gets at that piece. And I'm sorry, I'm standing. I was at a computer all day and I did something to my neck. So the sitting thing is not working for me. Um, yes. Well, I just took, I just took the citizens of Holyoke through the community preservation act. I just took okay. that off the, the existing sign that was, that was there. I, if you want to put taxpayers. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, too. Um, the other question I had was, you know, Olivia, from our perspective, um, a lot of projects come in, right? And it's like, uh, we actually require that if it's on city property, a city department head has been tasked with being in charge of that project. Um, and so it used to be like Bob Parent, right? Then it became Chris Baker um, in, in terms of this project and, you know, specifically. And the committee's assumption, again, we all, you know, know what happened when you assume things, is that when, uh, you know, we were working with Chris Baker to, uh, you know, figure out what the sign was going to be and where it was going to go, that like they would have spoken to you as the co-applicant, right? Um, so that's why, you know, from your perspective, like how come we didn't get any say in it, right? It's because like, well, we would assume that the person who's, you know, working that that's, that's like the city department head that's been assigned to us is working with the, the co-applicant. Um, but what we can do as a matter of process in the future is just, you know, send around a form that's that where the co-applicant and the city department head are both signing off on the design and placement of the sign for historic projects. Yep. That's that that would be fine. I mean, uh, uh, I, and Chris, I know, was new to the new to the scene. Um, yeah. So I'm sure he didn't know. I'm sure, he didn't know any of this background because this is um, or any of the players involved. Yeah, so, I, think, I, I don't um, think it was intentional. It seems like an oversight. Oh yeah, it was uh, just. Helene, I saw Helene's hand up. Helene. <clears throat> You're muted. Oh. Sorry about that. Um, I was actually trying to find the Miracle League signage. Does anyone have an image of that? I'm just sort okay. of, I guess my thought or question is how much variation in signage we've done in the past. Um, and, you know, we sort of work to have standardized signs as part of the process that, you know, the funds go and then there's the standardized sign that has this particular logo and information. Um, and so I, I, I'm I, just trying to think, and I know the Miracle League one talks about Miracle League and CPA, and I'm just not sure quite how those go together because I'm just going by my memory and I can't seem to find an image. Um, yeah. But that's, I guess, the, the question is just as time goes on. Oh, Maribel's here. Oh, good. Um, as time goes on, you know, if we're saying we need a uh, signage, I guess I, I, see a, I see a positive, but not necessarily that this has to be when we make the decision of having really standardized signs that are appropriate. I know that the JFK Memorial had something a bit different and stuff like that. Um, and certainly it sounds like how it was put up in City Hall wasn't appropriate. So having it outside the room or, you know, in a place that's visible, but is not going to interfere with people's experience, that is very understandable. Um, but, you know, that if, if a project has multiple funders and has multiple folks participating, um, that there can be multiple signs that make that clear, but do we want to have CPA kind of be its identifiable self? I just the concern being that if it's sort of embedded in other signs, and I'm not really even talking about this one, but just thinking of a standardized practice, if it's embedded in other signs, is it then become, you know, uh, malleable, like how much people will know that that CPA was involved in funding. Yep. Um, Mary, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. No, nope. I'm just moving around here. I may have. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. Meg, I saw your hand up for sure. Um, yes, we've talked back and forth about signs a lot uh, to myself and Amy and Jay. And I think that one of the things I would like to see us establish this fall is clear signage, whether it's standardized, whether it's pre-purchased, whether it's a, here are three designs, you pick one. Um, because I do think um, that people should know, like here is expectation. And if you wanna go above and beyond, 
like you need to run that by us, but here are the standard signs that that we would approve and that people ahead of time would know how much to budget for because that's the biggest issue we're having with smaller applicants is they don't know how much to budget for. They don't know how much it will cost. And so then they run into issues later on in the project, not having the funding to do it easily. So um, I do think that that's a good idea, Helene, um, that we should keep working on. Um, in the meantime though, if the main issue was just the placement, because I think it was, I'm wondering if we can just put the sign that we already paid for and, and was just put it outside in the foyer. Because it does look more professional because it's a, you know, it's an enamelized sign. It looks like a permanent sign. I think like the, 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 what you have in the, the frame, it looks more like a temporary sign. The, the sign in the last. frame. You yeah, know, the like sign in the frame is just a draft. Either. It was just a temporary draft. Okay. So uh, we don't have we don't have the funds to to do a a, a permanent sign. sign like that to to be bolted into the wall. Um, but but I think it's important to get the departments in there, departments of public works, all those people, the engineer, the engineers, and and the friends. So they, the, but the original sign doesn't mention that. The, it just CPA takes credit for it all, and the it's. Not, I'm credit. sorry, it came. This came way before CPA was, uh, you know, a, 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 a glint in everyone's eye. Chris, well, I, I understand that it feels like maybe credit's not being given, but in the sign, it's not CPA being given the credit. It's the citizens, and the friends were crowdsourcing from citizens. So like, I, I do understand that we, you know, we may want to see some other sign in the future when it can be afforded to be done. But in the meantime, at least people would know that this project was done and was largely funded through citizens, right? Using CPA funding. And I, I understand that maybe it, it you know, excludes mm -hmm. that first window that was done. Um, yeah, there but, were many windows that were done by private funds, by grants, by mass historic grants, long be, it, it's from uh, 2012. So CPA came in at the end, you know, and thankfully they did, and and we're grateful for it. But uh, they they the friends carried the water for for the windows. I'm just saying that's yeah, all. I would agree. I mean, the, the friends carried the bucket, and the, the CPA filled the bucket with water, and and so. I think it's just it's going to come down to a question of do we want two signs or do we want one sign? I think that's what we're going to we're kind of aiming towards. Um, I do have a little bit of a list here. Um, I have Chris first, then Helene and then Michael. Um, before you go, Chris, I just do want to also acknowledge that, um, you know, we do want to be cognizant of, of the historic commission and making sure that we're not overstepping them. I think we, we you know, unintentionally had done that in this instance, and I just hope <laughs> And um, keep a good eye out on that, just to make sure um, you know we're following good pro process and, and including our you know historic commission, which is represented on our board. Go ahead, Chris. Right, the placement. I just wanted Olivia. What what was the difference on the original plaque? It was the friends, and you said what the DPW. Yep. What's what's on the current plaque? Is it just strictly saying CPA? This one here. <laughs> No, the one that was taken down. Does that uh, just the, uh, the stained glass day? window restoration in City Hall was supported by the citizens of Holyoke through the C uh, Community Preservation Act? Okay. Yep. So we've got one sign that's from this, you know, just acknowledges the CPA as is typical of our signage, and then one proposed that kind of loops in the other uh, involved party. So it's you know it could right. go either way, and then uh, Helene's next, and then Michael. Lee? Sorry, the mute button's getting me. Um, I, I guess I just wanted to clarify that in this contract, as the other ones have been, um, I think this is a little bit before my time, but or maybe the, my very first vote, but we have included in the contract that signage is something that is responsible, the responsibility of the project. And, you know, Meg's idea that it has to be a budget item that is researched before we're going to review the applications and vote, I think is a really good one. 
um, because it seems like maybe it sort of got lost in the fine print. But I do want to, I don't know who put this up. I, we didn't create the sign, right, or pay for it. Um, so it's interesting how it got put up. But, um, but it was always that project's responsibility to provide the sign as a part of the project. And that's standard on all the contracts as far as I know. And so just, you know, this is just to make sure that we're treating everyone, you know, the same. Um, and I think, you know, having a separate sign that acknowledges everyone who's helped totally makes sense and I can understand that. Um, but, you know, we, we do sort of with so many projects coming in, we do wanna have a standardized way of making sure, you know, this is what we can do, we can provide this, but there is the signage requirement. Um, so I just want All right, I think we lost Helene there, right? As she was wrapping up, um, hopefully she'll come back. Uh, Michael? Mr. Chairman, we're spending way too much time on this thing, it's a sign. Olivia, is this the sign you want? Yes. Is that the you. sign you want? Yes, yes. Okay, it, it, how much did it cost you to, to make to do this and put a frame around it? That's a tough uh, We I printed it out. Uh put put your logo in and uh and and we had a frame. Okay, how much did it cost you? Nothing. All right. This what was, are we this... arguing about? If this is what you folks want, you got a place to put it, you have it, just correct the spelling and let's move on. I mean Okay. I don't know why we're spending all this time on, on this particular sign. I mean, come on. Well, I think there's some nuance to it. I, th you know, I think we we're going to be here all night. I mean, well, what are you thinking of Mona Lisa? Do you want to discuss the pros and cons of what the Da Vinci had in mind? I mean, it's a sign. It is a sign, but the sign that was on the wall was a very substantial sign, expensive. Right. Sign. What do you want from a nicer? We're going from a nicer sign. The, the, the issues I think are we're going from a nicer sign to maybe a not not as nice sign. And then also we're opening a can of worms of of looping in all these other things with our sign. So I think, you know, what it comes down to is we could we could take a vote to accept uh, Olivia's draft language of a new sign and allow uh, the friends of City Hall to put that put that sign up in the foyer or we could vote not to do that or we could sort of punt on the issue and talk about it more. Uh, Mary. Who put up and paid for the sign that was taken down? The city I, of Holyoke through Chris Baker. Okay. Oh, through Chris Baker, through the- yes, He was the applicant along with the friend. Oh, okay, thank you. DPW, so, so that's the concern is that we're not gonna, it won't be as nice of a sign and that will, uh, you know, it's it's opening a can of worms. But on the uh, flip side, you know, is that Olivia and her group have carried the football on this project. And, you know, they want to be included, and I don't think that that's you know that doesn't seem too too much to me. I think um, you know, I think we I, I'd entertain a motion on the topic. I don't know if somebody would want to put put forth a proposal on you know accepting the draft language or if we want to move uh, move forward against it. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that um, we accept the sign as Olivia has drafted with the frame and just put it up and go on to our next topic. I mean, well, I think I think the proposal would be the the, the sign wouldn't be that framed sign, uh, Olivia, it would be a. a, a kind Absolutely. Of... Right. I would like to work with the uh, is Chris still there or we have a new engineer. We don't have an engineer. Oh. We don't have, okay. we have an interim, Victoria, who's outstanding. She's the, she's the interim still. Um, okay. So, so we'd like to work with DPW to get up uh, something uh, that uh, that would appeal to you, and uh, and and have our wording there and and make it and 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 move forward. Can I can I make a? You want this, Olivia, or not? Is this is this no? Michael, I like the wording. Uh, if if we could if we could, I'd like to make a proposal that. Uh, perhaps Olivia could get some quotes on some actual signs and we could get some exact language without any typos in it. And we could see exactly what we'll be voting on. And mm -hmm. I'll bring it up and you can be the second thing on the agenda of our next meeting and we can not have a long discussion about it and make a decision that end. We feel like that might be something that we could uh, action item on. And that way, you know, we want to be respect. I think what we want to do 
is we want to make sure we have a nice sign. We want right. to sure right. that the taxpayer's uh, contribution is represented. That's what that's what the purpose of our sign is. But we want to be respectful to our partners who have carried the football on these awesome projects and done a nice job. Right. So, right. You know, we're just trying to kind of thread that needle. And I think uh, if it's all right with the committee. Uh, and if it's all right with you, Olivia, we could, um, I don't want to use the word, I guess I use football terms a lot, punt. And, um, you know, if you could bring us back some, some hard data, here's the exact. I'll bring you some proposals. Talk. Yes. That, then we could, then we could move it forward for you and everybody uh, will feel good about it. Does the committee, would the committee feel uh, comfortable with that? I don't know if we're taking a vote since we're not doing anything. I agree. I think that's I like good. it. Yeah. Any concerns? No. My issue is not with the wording. It's just wanting a permanent sign. It's I'm fine sorry? if the wording, like my my issue is not the wording. If the, mm -hmm. we want to change the wording, that's fine. Then just as long as there's a budget that someone can come up with to pay for it and it's a permanent sign, it's great. Yeah, it's nice. And, and I just say this, if anybody has any thoughts or comments on the wording between now and our next meeting is the time to let Olivia know that. So um okay. then that information to me so you know and we'll and we'll button this up olivia in october we'll have our okay. sign we'll forge ahead and see uh and see if we can get that project done and uh you know it's a beautiful project too it's it's one of you know being from Hoyoke, you're you're born proud of that city hall and i just love those stained glass windows it's just a, it's just a great thing so we want to try to uh you know button that up in a nice way. So thank you for coming out. Does the committee feel comfortable sort of punting on that one? I, I don't know, you know, like I said, we won't vote because there's not any. I action. do, yes. Um, okay, sounds good. So sounds good. Thank you, Olivia. And you'll thank follow you. up with me about what we discussed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. All right, so moving on to, I think, yes, I got one, I got one more thing and then and then uh, we'll go to some old business and we'll have some time uh, for, for discussion there. I know Michael had something and then we also had an issue from last uh, meeting, Mary, um, that we never got to. If you remember, you had brought up a concern about a process from our, um, our meeting beforehand. Um, so our, our uh, number five agenda item is related to the uh, architects. So I have good news on that. I message, I was able to reach out and speak with Tyler Kane, and he has agreed to come back to uh, support the CPA. So um, yeah, so that'll be easier for us. He's, um, he's the one who did the eligibility applications um, in the last couple of years. And, um, you know, I sent him a message and he got back to me within like three minutes. He was all excited to get back going for, uh, for the CPA. So I just want to let you know that we're on top of that as well. Um, yeah. Beautiful. So, um, so moving on to number uh, number six, other. Um, I know Michael at the beginning of the meeting you had said you had a couple of things that you wanted to uh, discuss uh, in old business. Now I think would be a good time for that one. If you uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll just be a few minutes because I know you wanted to get uh, ask Mary about an item from, uh, I believe the minutes from August uh, August fourteenth. Um, it was the. Um, Oh, we have the administration. Okay, we've got the admin budget for next year. We've got that. Um, there was uh, the committee, one of the things under sign, oh God almighty. I don't want to bring this up. It's about sign discussion. Forget it. I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> um, any any update on the Pulaski uh, uh, Park study? Anything new on that? No, uh, what, the last thing we had was, um, and Meg, correct me if I'm wrong, because you're, I think you were in the email was um, they had, they had, they were going to, everything was ready to, to roll. They had cleared out the drain that they needed to clear out. They had gotten permission to bring the heavier equipment onto the uh, Pulaski park and they were set to do it. I haven't gotten the actual report yet, um, but I'm waiting to hear back from Victoria, our city uh, engineer on like three different things. So um okay. I, and she's very good. She's on top of all of it. I'll say this, like, I have a lot of confidence that she's, she's holding their feet to the fire and making sure that's being done. She's been very responsive. So I'm kind of almost like, you know, I'm not like so hard on, on following up with her on it. So she's, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she'll check in with me like this week or next. And I can, um, I can forward you that info if you'd like, um, just so you're, uh, no, Mr. Chairman, just for next month's meeting, sure. just to give us all an update on, on that particular, because it's, yep. we all agree it's such a beautiful park, and uh, wow, it could really bring back that whole neighborhood. 
You're so out. You're that, that was uh, that was it. So if you want to discuss, I think we with Mary you were talking about item ten on the uh, August fourteenth meeting, Mr. Chairman. I'm presuming you were talking to her about that. No, it was actually Mary. If you recall, we had um, had a, a procedural issue. It was a vote. I think it was from our June meeting. And it, was that correct? Do you want to discuss that and have a have a, a procedural vote procedural vote on that, Mary? Uh, yeah. Okay, we can do that. I'm just still trying to collect my thoughts. I can't remember all the ways back to June. <laughs> I'll be honest. Yeah. Anyway, but I do, I do, I did bring up some notes that I have for myself here. And um, all right. So in in at the June meeting, we had uh, agreed to contract terms whereby. Uh, all the parts of a um, application had to be, and uh, end of a contract had to be completed. Um, uh, was disbursement forms must be filled out, minor changes to the scope of work as long as they are in the spirit uh, with goals could be approved. 10% of the funds would be awarded. Um, failure to complete the terms of the project will prevent future funding for all applicant organizations in subsequent funding rounds. Then we, we made a motion and to accept all those terms and we approved the motion. And so therefore that was the plan of action for the contracts. In the next meeting, it was brought up that people were not completely happy with that idea. Um, and they had some other ideas. So um, the process usually is first that you have to um, revisit a motion if you're going to change it. And then um, you need to make a new motion. Well, first of all, that has to be voted on as to whether, you know, if everybody is unhappy with the original motion, then they'd agree to have a new discussion. And then you take up the discussion of the new topic and then you do a new motion. So um, anyway, what we did at the next meeting was just have a discussion about, um, some people were unhappy with the concept of having this be a universal and that this set of rules would not necessarily apply to city contracts. And then at the end of a long discussion, uh, we just said, uh, okay, what do we think about that? And nobody answered. And there was a new uh, person that had uh, was supposed to come to the meeting, arrived just then. So we quit the discussion and took up the next person. So it was just left hanging. So everything in the June meeting that was written about contracts should still hold. There should mm -hmm. not have been any changes to contracts based on that other discussion. If we don't like that, then we need to start over again. Okay. Um, could I propose this? Um, I could, um, we could write up, do we want to write up a new proposal and review it for next meeting? I mean, I don't care if anybody it does, is, uh, what happened with the contracts? Did they go through with the June, um, with, the, with these parameters? Uh, possibly. I mean, I, I'd have to, I'd have to go back and look at the exact parameters that we laid out. I mean, we did have some, some minor changes to language. It was mostly just, um, you know, just language type stuff. It wasn't really changing the purpose. It was more making it less, you know, less aggressive. You know what I mean? It was kind of more of like a softening of wording than, than anything, but, um, yeah, I'd have to review that specifically because um, I'll be honest, I just don't remember the specifics enough of it to to take a vote on this. And I just wonder if anyone else in the committee does. And yeah, I want it's to, it's it's yeah. so complicated. And I the, think uh, let's just put it this way: all of the things in the contract should look the same as we said in the June meeting. I do, yeah. uh, where we, we have so many things to cope with right now that I, you know going back is like yeah, just yeah. too overwhelming. Uh, you know, hopefully all the contracts said this uh if they don't well then we'll be in trouble later on but um let's hope the contract said that yes yes i'll, I'll take a look and, and make sure um and 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 we'll you know if we need to take action i think that we will but i i 
I would be forcing it and 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 not having yeah. thought through it enough if I if I acted on it tonight. I'll be honest, I just don't recall it to the degree that I think I need to. So yeah. um forget about it. Yep. Is there any other uh old business that wanted that anybody wanted to discuss? I did want to have uh I had a comment on another topic. Um but any other committee related business questions? I just just very two quick questions. Yep, Chris. Meg, I just uh, got the email of the potential for this round. So it's just been three historic. So far. Yeah, so far. I mean, it's nine eleven, and it's not due till the sixteenth. Right. We're going to see a lot of them flood in on the sixteenth, okay. um, and I already know of one other that um, the DPW is working on. So right. I know that there will be others. Okay. And Mary, you'll be in touch of some sort in the future to meet. Yeah, or... I, I'm pretty sure I have everybody's email and I probably will be in touch tomorrow sometime. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, did anybody have any other questions or comments? No. Um, well, I think, you know, I do want to acknowledge this is, uh, this will be Amy's last meeting um, mm -hmm. for the PA and um, Amy, if you're there, I just want to um, tell you that I appreciated uh, working with you since I've been appointed to the committee. Um, I appreciate your um, all your help as I became become the chairperson. Um, you know, you've been involved in the CPA and helped build it up from the beginning in Holyoke and and made a great impact on our city. So, I wanted to uh, really thank you genuinely uh, for your good work for the people of Holyoke and for, um, for helping our city. And, um, you know, we wish you the best moving forward. And, um, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge your good service to the, to the committee. And um, I didn't know if any other uh, members had any thoughts as well. <clears throat> just thank yeah, you. I'd like, Oops, sorry. Go ahead. That was it. Just thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Yep, you've been there since the beginning, Amy, and we've we really have, you know, you've done so much, and uh, you really helped form this, um, you know, how, how the city of Holyoke um, uses the CPA, and uh, we we do appreciate all you've done. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate your comments. Yeah, Absolutely. Amy, uh, thank you. Um, you've been extraordinarily helpful since the beginning. Uh, when I introduced myself as Alex Morris and you didn't believe me and um, all the laughs we've had together through the emails and your help, um, it's really, you did an outstanding job. And it really, uh, we're here because of your efforts, uh, no matter how different our opinions and uh, at times tangents we went off on, we were able to get it to solidify into a, a um, into a coherent basis of way in do of doing business. We have to admit when we first started, we didn't have anything, we had zero. And it was from your help and guidance along with the committee members, but certainly your help and guidance got us here where we are today. That's why we're arguing about signs. I mean, come on. <laughs> but anyway, but thanks, Amy. Uh, and thank you for your help and all you've done. It's been a remarkable run. And I, I think all of us here wish you the very best of, of everything because you deserve it. Indeed. Indeed. And um, I hope you take great pride in the projects that you've completed and keep an eye on us. We're going to we're going to keep grinding and, and uh, doing some some work for the good people of Hoyoke. So uh, we, we thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Oh. oh, please, please go ahead. Amy. I just wanted to mention that I'm working on a document to um, like a transition document. So for whoever the new person is, they'll have some kind of roadmap with information because there is a lot. So yep, thank and, you for your comments. I'm, and I should I note also. Thank you, but um, I keep getting kicked off and freezing, so um, that's just what happened. But thank you so much, and I literally don't know how we're going to find someone to do what you've done. Um, very, very diverse things we've asked you to do. We've asked you to write contracts. We've asked you to uh, interpret um, federal regulations that have stumped with attorneys, and it's just it's really appreciated. Thank you for, for everything you've done. Absolutely. And I think I just want to note also that Amy's been outstanding with helping in our transition. She's um, remained active and has been uh, been uh, just just excellent with with uh, helping us get get into a good position moving forward. So we thank you, Amy, uh, for your good good work. And she'll still be with us uh, 
for a few more days. So we'll be in, uh, we'll be in touch and, uh, you know, make sure you drop her a line and say, and thank her, uh, if you can. So, uh, with that, I may, uh, seven, seven Oh one, I don't want to brag, but, uh, I may entertain a motion to, uh, to end this meeting. Um, Mr. Chairman, prior to that, do you want to have a subcommittee to begin working with Amy to select a, a, a successor to her job? Do you want to? Um, I don't know. If that now, or what would you want to do? I, I think I don't know if I, a subcommittee uh, would would be the best thought right okay. now, but I think um, there's a lot of different uh, balls in the air on that one. I think we're. Um, you know, the goal for me is just to communicate well with the committee, just to try to, you know, let everybody know what we're working on. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of different options and there's a lot, uh, a lot that the CPA does. So it's going to be a complex thing. And I think we, you know, time where there's some time pressure as well. So we're going to stay on top of it. And um, I think my pledge is just to really try to communicate well and just, um, you know, I think I'll have some good information in the next couple of weeks before our next meeting. I think going into our next meeting will be, that'll be our focus. So, you know, maybe we'll solidify around some, some sort of a thought of maybe it'd be a subcommittee, but, you know, maybe we'll say this is the direction we, we, we want to move in. How do we feel about this and then kind of go about doing it. So, um, but yeah, it's definitely at the top of the list. Um, I think we took some good steps tonight to, um, you know, give us a little bit of a bridge to that. Um, I think Daniel's going to do a nice job and keep us moving there. And, um, you know, uh, and Tyler, I appreciate the eligibility. Yeah. And I appreciate the, you know, I appreciate the, the willingness of the committee members to step up and, and, um, and jump in on Mary's committee. I think everybody in the, in the room raised their hand. I think Mary and Mary was maybe concerned that no, she would be the only one. And then, you know, all of a sudden I'm concerned. I'm like, I think we're going to be past quorum here. So, um, you know, I said it last meeting, I'll say it again. We're all unpaid volunteers, right? We're all busy people. And I, and I, and I, when I say that, I, I appreciate the, the work that, that you're giving to us. I, I mean it. So, um, I will, uh, entertain a motion to uh, wrap this meeting up if, uh, if so moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Bye. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night.